Welcome back for day two of the Blender Basics Bootcamp. Today, we're gonna model some things. By the end of this video, you'll have your very own trophy cup and a pretty solid understanding of polygon and subdivision surface modeling. There's a whole lot to cover here, so let's get to it. My name is Chris Folia. I'm your Stream Scholar. Welcome to Stream School. All right, now before we actually model anything, the absolute very first step is gonna be to find some good reference. Now, normally I just go to Google Images, find some pictures I like, and bring those into Blender as an inspiration board. But I already modeled a trophy cup that I'm pretty fond of while developing this tutorial series, so I'm gonna use that for my reference instead. And I've also uploaded it to Discord if you wanna use it as well. So to actually bring your reference into Blender, we have a few different options. For one, you could just hit Shift A on your keyboard to bring up the add menu, go down to image, and here we have reference or background. Unfortunately, those come into Blender as actual 3D object image planes that rotate and move around with your view while you're working, which makes it a little bit tedious to glance at them just for inspiration. Those are more useful, honestly, if you have something like a blueprint for a car, where you have a dedicated front, top, and side view, or even a character sheet or something like that. So what I like to do is bring up the Blender internal image editor over here to the left and just dock my reference on the side where I can glance at it conveniently whenever I want to. So to do that, all you have to do is move your cursor all the way down to the lower left hand corner until it becomes a crosshair. At this point, you're going to click and drag to split this into two panels horizontally, which by the way, this is how you can customize the Blender interface to be pretty much whatever you want. You can split this indefinitely. But at this point, I'm gonna to go to the upper left-hand corner, click on the drop-down, and go to the image editor. You'll also notice on the right here that the hotkey is Shift F10. So I'm gonna click on image editor, go to image, open, and here I just wanna find wherever my reference is on my hard drive and double-click it to bring it in. So at this point, we can zoom in and out using our mouse wheel, or we can pan around by clicking in our mouse wheel and dragging our mouse around. You don't have to worry about it rotating because this is not a 3D view. So this is super useful because you could say zoom in and pan around to look at the specific close-up detail sections, or you can zoom out to get a really good feel for your overall reference. And you can also take your reference and pop it out into its own window if you'd rather put it on a second monitor. And to do that, all you have to do is go down to the lower left-hand corner until your mouse becomes a crosshair, hold shift, click and drag, and that'll pop it out into its own individual window, which you can then take and do whatever you want with it. Then to free up this real estate to merge these panels back together, all you have to do is go down to the lower left-hand corner of the 3D view until your mouse becomes a crosshair, click and drag into the image editor. And here you'll notice that we have this nice faint arrow saying that we're going to merge it in this direction. If I drag over to the right, it would merge in the opposite direction, but the arrow is a lot more visible. So anyway, I'm gonna drag to the left, release, and here we have it, just the 3D viewport. Now, I personally want my image docked over there to the left, so I'm gonna redo exactly what we did, but lightning fast. So I'm gonna go down to the corner, split it out, go to the image editor, and bring up my image, just like so. So at this point, I, have a, I feel like I need to explain a couple of things. First of all, this trophy looks like a nice, round, smooth metal object. However, in 3D space, there's actually no such thing as a round object. Every single 3D object is composed of tons and tons of tiny flat polygons or faces in the exact same way that this cube is created by six individual flat faces. This trophy is created by probably hundreds, thousands, or maybe even millions of tiny little flat polygons. Secondly, Blender is divided up into different modes. By default, we're in object mode, and you can see that in the upper left-hand corner right here. Object mode allows us to select individual objects, I accidentally hit it, whoops, uh, move those objects around and manipulate them, like so. Now, the second mode in Blender is edit mode. That allows you to edit your individual objects, and that's how we're gonna create our own custom model using the geometry. So to get to edit mode, all you have to do is select your object. It'll be highlighted in orange. 
you can hit tab and now we're in edit mode as you can see in the upper left hand corner now in edit mode we can see very clearly that this cube is built out of a few different components for one we have individual points or vertices vertex for singular we can click and select each of these individual vertices these vertices are connected by lines or edges and then these lines connect to create faces or individual polygons. So we can select each of these individual vertices or we can hold shift to select multiple of them. Once we have some of them selected, we can do the exact same things that we learned in object mode in the last video. We can hit G to grab them, we can hit R to rotate them, or we can hit S to scale them. Then we also have a few different selection modes. We can select the individual points, or we can go to edge select mode by clicking this button right here. And that'll allow us to select individual edges where we have the exact same kind of controls to scale, rotate, and move. Or we can go to face select by selecting the third button up here, which allows us to select each individual face or we have the exact same controls to scale, rotate, and grab. And the hotkeys for these individual buttons, since moving your mouse up here to the upper left hand corner is going to get a little bit tedious after a while, are one for vertex select, two for edge select, and three for face select. We're going to switch between these modes a lot throughout this tutorial, so get familiar. <laughs> At this point, those are pretty much the absolute bare minimum basics of 3D modeling. Modeling is all about pushing and pulling and adding subdivisions so you can create the shape that you want. So knowing that, let's go ahead and get started making our trophy cup. I'm going to go ahead and hit 1 on my keyboard to switch back to vertex select. I'm going to hit tab to go back to object mode. And here I'm going to make sure my weird misshapen cube is selected. I'm going to delete it. I'm going to select the light. I'm going to hit delete. I'm going to select the camera, I'm going to hit delete, and here we have a completely blank canvas. When you're modeling, it's important to choose the right shape to start with, and I don't think a cube is a really good shape to start with to make a nice cylindrical trophy cup. I think a cylinder primitive is going to work a lot better as a foundation. So to add a cylinder, all we have to do is hit shift A on our keyboard, go to mesh, and go to cylinder, just like that. And here you'll notice the exact same rules apply. This cylinder is composed of a bunch of flat faces. We have a big flat face on the top, big flat face on the bottom, and all of the round edges are created by 32 individual flat rectangles, which I think is pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit one to go back to the front orthographic view. I'm gonna hit tab to go into edit mode, make sure I'm in vertex select mode. And here I can click and drag to select the bottom vertices because let's say I wanna put these on the floor plane rather than beneath the floor plane. Now, when I clicked and dragged to select these, it looks like I selected all of them. However, because we're in solid shaded mode, if I rotate around, you'll notice that it only selected the points that were visible in the front. It did not select the points in the back as well. So if I moved this right now by hitting G, we'd get some pretty weird results. So I'm going to right click to set that back down to where it was. I'm going to hit one to go to orthographic view. The next thing I want to talk about is the difference between solid shaded and wireframe views. So you can swap between the two with the buttons up here by clicking wireframe or solid, or you can use the hotkey with the radial menu, which is my preferred way to do it. So I'm going to hold Z. That's going to bring up a radial menu here in edit mode, and I can just move my mouse over whichever viewing mode I want. Like, let's say I want wireframe. Then if I release Z, it'll put us in wireframe mode. And that seemed really slow and tedious, but if you get really fast with the radial menus, I promise it becomes like Lightning McQueen. You can just hold down Z, move to the right, now we're in solid, hold down Z, move to the left, now we're in wireframe, which is super useful. So now that we're in wireframe transparent view mode, I can click and drag the bottom vertices. And here you'll notice it actually selected all all of them this time. So I'm going to hit one on my numpad to go back to front orthographic. And now we're going to bring up the transform panel. And to do that, I'm going to hit in on my keyboard. You'll notice it pops out here. If I hit in again, that'll hide it. Or you can click this little arrow here and that'll bring it up just the same. Under the item panel, you'll notice that the median of our selection is at negative one meters on the z-axis. So we're kind of ignoring the meters unit for now and just shaping things to what looks right to our eye. And if I click on the Z, 
and type zero and hit enter, now you'll notice that our points moved straight up to the floor. Now, this moved to the local zero point of our object rather than our scene. If we clicked global, it would go to the zero point of our scene, which just happens to be identical to our object zero point right now. So I'm going to now select the top vertices like so, and I'm gonna make this about as tall as I think our trophy should be. I'm gonna hit G Z and just move it up like so. I think about four of these grid squares looks about correct proportionally. And again, this doesn't have to be 100% accurate. We're just eyeballing it. So I'm gonna click to set that down. And here, I wanna explain something because we're about to learn our very first modeling tool. So if I go back to solid shaded mode by holding Z and going to solid, you'll notice we have a nice ring of faces here. And this is a tall cylinder, but we can't bend these faces because all 3D objects are made up of a ton of flat faces. So to make the shape we want, we need to add more faces vertically so we can move those in. And to do that, we're going to divide this using a tool called the loop cut. So you notice we have this ring or loop of faces that goes all the way around our cylinder. So to divide that, I'm gonna hit Control R on my keyboard for loop cut. I'm gonna hover my mouse over this ring of faces and you'll notice that this nice yellow ring appears. So if I click, that's gonna add an entire new edge loop to our cylinder, which means now we have two faces vertically instead of just one. Now, by default with the tool, after you click to set it, you'll be able to slide it up and down. I'm gonna put mine somewhere around here. We can always change that later and click to set it. At this point, if I scaled this in, now we're able to create a different shape with our flat faces, but that looks kind of like an hourglass because we don't have quite enough subdivisions yet to turn this into a trophy cup. So I'm gonna right click to undo my scaling. I'm gonna hit one to go to orthographic front. And here we're gonna add some additional subdivisions to create more of a cup shape. So the bare minimum subdivisions we need are one subdivision for this tall base area, one subdivision to scale on down here, one subdivision to scale on down here, and then I think we'll be good. So if I hit Control R, add a subdivision and slide it down for my base, just like so, then I can hit Control R, maybe put this one somewhere around here, set it down, hit Control R, maybe move this one somewhere around here. Now I could go into transparent wireframe select and just select these faces like to select all the way through, but there's a faster way to select this entire loop. If I hit three to go to face select, put my mouse or cursor between two of the faces and hold alt on my keyboard, then click, it'll select the entire ring of faces, which is a super convenient way to select anything in Blender. So now I'm just gonna hit S, Shift Z to scale on everything except the Z axis. And as you can see, we're starting to better define our trophy shape like so. Oh, well, I think something like that's probably a good thickness for our stem or root, whatever you wanna call it. I guess it's the stem, I don't know. And here, I think we can also make the base a little bit narrower, a lower diameter than the top. So I'm gonna hold Alt, click between two faces, and now I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did with the stem. Just S, Shift, Z. I'm gonna scale this down until I think it looks about right. Uh, modeling is all about tweaking and nudging until you get the shape that you like. You don't have to worry about being perfect on the first pass. You can always adjust things later. So for instance, I can hit one to go to vertex select, hold alt, click between two vertices, and that'll select that entire loop, just like with faces. Now I can move this down to make it more of a trophy cup shape. And I can do the exact same thing with this stem right here and just move it down. So now we get like more of this elongated trophy shape rather than a weird goblet. I'm just gonna keep pushing and pulling until I get a shape that I like. Something like this seems pretty good to me. Uh, you're gonna notice that this goblet or this trophy cup is uh, pretty blocky. It's It's got these sharp angles and honestly, it would probably take weeks to just keep adding edge loops and scaling them to match this perfect round structure. So Blender has a tool for that called the subdivision surface modifier. And to use that, we're gonna hit tab to go back out to object mode, go over to the right here where we have the wrench icon, I'm gonna click on it, and this is our modifier panel. Modifiers in Blender allow you to non-destructively edit your object. So you can add modifiers, they'll edit the appearance of your object, but they won't actually edit the underlying geometry of your object. And, and because of that, you can now turn modifiers on or off, you can modify them, you can move them around in the modifier stack, and none of that is going to destroy or edit 
edit your underlying geometry. It's a really cool system. So I'm going to hit the drop down for add modifier, go down to subdivision surface, and I'm going to click on it. You'll notice immediately this no longer looks like a trophy cup, uh, regardless of how blocky it was. It looks more like a torpedo now. And that's because this modifier is subdividing our geometry and averaging between the corners. So if I hit tab to go back to edit mode, you'll notice that it's trying to round out the corners by averaging between them like so. But we're only, we're only dividing each face once on each axis. So each quad is now turning into four faces instead of one face. But if I turn up the levels on this, it's going to divide it even more. If I turn up the levels even more, it's going to divide it and round it out even more. Now, the reason we're getting this weird crown pattern is because the subdivision surface modifier really only works best with quad shape faces or polygons that only have four sides because the math just works out way better that way. So you have any other shaped uh, polygons or n-gons, a uh, polygon that has more than four sides, or even if you have tries, you're probably going to get some weird smoothing results. So you want to try to keep your models mostly to polygons, but we're just going to hide this in just a little bit since that is a weird 32 sided face. That's going to be hard to turn into quads. So anyway, knowing how this works now, all we have to do to get the trophy cup that we want is add a few additional subdivisions in ideal places to sort of shape the subdivision surface modifier. Now we're sort of just creating the cage that corrals and makes the subdivision surface modifier do what we want. So I'm going to hit tab to go back to edit mode and to just, just for example, just to sort of prove my point, we can hit control R to add an edge loop. Click. Now, if I drag this up all the way almost to the next edge, like so, you'll notice that we're getting a much sharper corner now. And that's because there's less space here to average between. There's let we, we have two straight pieces right here, so it's averaging between those and it's creating a much sharper corner. So now I can add another subdivision, do the exact same thing down here. And let's say I want to create these sharp edges like on the base of the trophy. Well, to do that, all I have to do is hit Control R, add a subdivision here, drag it up, add a subdivision here, and drag it down. And this is helping the subdivision surface modifier better define what you want it to do. Now, if we rotate around, you're going to notice that on the bottom, we have this sort of round, weird star looking sun wave pattern and we don't want that that's again being created because we have a weird 32 sided face so to hide that all we have to do is add an extra ring of quads around the base here so if i hit three to go to face select i can select the bottom and here we have it our next modeling tool of the day the inset tool so i'm going to hit i on my keyboard with that face selected now if i move my mouse in you'll notice that it insets the face in creating an entire nice ring of perfect four-sided faces. Beautiful. Mwah. So I'm going to move this in just a little bit to create a nice sharp corner. And you'll notice immediately that that gets rid of our weird sun wavy star pattern. I'm going to go back to my orthographic front. And now let's work on the trophy cup portion of this. So I'm just going to add an extra edge loop here, exactly the way we've been doing. Put it somewhere in the center to make that sort of nice elongated trophy cup shape. And I'm going to hit Control R, set another edge loop down, and create a nice corner up top here. And you'll notice immediately the top also has that 32-sided face, so we still get that weird wavy pattern. So let's go ahead and turn this into an actual cup. So I'm going to hit three to go to face select. You'll notice, by the way, if you do an edge loop cut while you're in face select mode, it'll automatically put you back in edge select mode. That's why we have to keep switching back. So I'm going to switch the top face or select the top face. I'm going to hit I to inset it to make a nice sharp corner. Set that in by clicking. I'm going to hit I to make another inset like so. However thick I think this cup should be. This is a nice fancy trophy cup. So we're going for that premium thickness. I'm going to set it in about there. Then I'm going to do one more inset just to make a sharp corner. And here we have our next modeling tool of the day. This is going to be the extrude tool. It allows you to extrude things in or out of your geometry. So if you have a face, edge, or vertex selected and you hit E on your keyboard for extrude, that allows you to extrude your geometry in or out. So if we extrude it out like this, we get this really weird looking crown. So to make a cup, we probably want to extrude it in. Uh, I'm going to extrude it out. 
just so we can laugh at it for a little bit. <laughs> then I'm gonna hit Control Z to undo it. And with this face selected, I'm gonna go to my front orthographic view by hitting numpad one. I'm gonna hold Z, go back to wireframe mode. And here I'm gonna hit E to extrude again. But this way, from the side view, we can actually see how deep we're putting this with accuracy, rather, in the, rather than in the warped perspective view. So I'm going to put this down to about right here. We don't care about modeling the entire interior of the cup. We just want enough there so it creates the illusion of this being a cup. So now I'm going to rotate back around, go back to solid shaded mode, add one more edge loop on the interior to hide that ugly 32-sided face star pattern. Click to apply that edge loop. Hit tab to go back to object mode, and we have something that's starting to look like a trophy cup, which is pretty cool. So next, I wanna modify the base here to be less angular and more round like the reference. So I'm gonna hit tab, go back into edit mode, hold Z, go to wireframe, and here we're gonna learn our next tool, which is the edge loop slide. So I'm gonna hit one to go to vertex select. I'm gonna alt click between two points to select an entire loop. Then if I hit G, that'll move it, but if I hit G again, that will slide it between the next two edge loops perfectly along the surface of the geometry, which is super useful. So I'm gonna slide this down to about here. Then I'm gonna hit GZ to move it down. And then I'm just gonna select this edge loop and move it down some as well. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth doing that until I get a shape that I really like. I kind of like that round shape. And here I'm gonna add one more edge loop just to make the stem a bit straighter until it gets to the curve. Something like that, just to define the shape a little bit better. And at this point, I think we wanna add a nice ornament to our stem like so, but I wanna go a little bit fancier, make something that looks a little bit cooler than my original plan. So to do that, I'm gonna hit Control R to add an edge loop. But another cool feature of the edge loop cut tool is that you can add multiple subdivisions at once. So if I just scroll up on my mouse wheel, now I'm adding two. If I scroll up a whole bunch, now I'm adding, as you can see, 85 cuts, which seems a little bit overkill to me. So I'm just gonna scroll all the way back down and we're gonna add three cuts to this. So if I click to set that, I can slide it up and down, but I don't really want to. So I'm just gonna right click and that's gonna still do the cuts but set the subdivisions in the direct center. Here, I'm gonna hit SZ to scale this down on the Z axis. And at this point, I'm gonna click to set that down, hold Alt and select the middle edge loop. And I'm just gonna scale that out by hitting S on my keyboard until I think it feels about right. And here, to make the fancy ornament that I'm picturing, I'm gonna add some additional edge loops. So I'm gonna hit Control R and slide that down close to there. I'm gonna hit Control R and slide it close, but whoops, I accidentally didn't take it far enough. So one way we can fix that is with that edge loop slide tool that I just showed you a second ago. So if I hit G and then G again, we can slide this perfectly along the surface of the geometry until it about matches the other edge loop, which is awesome. So at this point, I'm gonna select the central edge loop. I'm gonna scale that in using S as per normal. Click like that, and here I'm going to select each edge loop individually, and I'm gonna rotate them, not quite 45 degrees. I'm just gonna rotate them and eyeball it until it looks about right to me, like so. Over here, if I hit tab to go back to object mode and hold Z to go back to solid shaded, this is looking pretty cool, but I wanna smooth it out a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to wireframe, go back to edit mode. I'm gonna select the base edge loops and move those down until we get a neat shape. And I might even scale this in some to give it sort of like a nice curve, which I need to select this edge loop and modify that as well. To a to get that. Like I said, modeling is just pushing, pulling, and nudging until you get the shape you want. Just mess with it and mess with it and mess with it and you'll eventually end up with what you want. Success through iteration. So I'm gonna select the top edge loop here, hit GZ to move that up. And I'm gonna scale this one in as well. And if we hold Z, go to solid, hit tab to go back to object mode, this is looking like a pretty cool design to me. So I'm gonna modify the cup shape just a little bit. I'm gonna hold Z to go to wireframe, hit tab, and I'm gonna click and drag to select all of these edge loops, GZ. I'm just gonna move this up maybe just a little bit, not a whole ton, I'm just nudging it because I'm an absolute perfectionist. So I'm gonna hit tab to go back to object mode, hold Z, go back to solid shaded mode, and this is looking pretty cool. We just got a couple things left to add to this cup, and then we can start working on the base. But the next step is gonna be this nice little strip ornament right here. 
So to do that, I'm gonna hit tab to go to edit mode, control R to do my loop cut, I'm gonna scroll up once to create two subdivisions. I'm gonna click and I'm gonna slide this one up until it looks about right. Then I'm gonna hold Alt and click on this edge loop and I'm gonna hit G twice and then just slide this up until it looks about right. Now we need to add some additional edge loops here just so we can scale these in to create that nice little indentation. And to do that, we have another tool. So rather than control R for edge loop cut, we're gonna select our edge loop like so. And we're gonna hit control shift R for offset edge loop cut. And what that's gonna allow us to do is create edges on either side of our edge loop, which is super useful. You notice the bottom one is going a lot further than the top one. That's because the distance between the next edge loop is so much bigger. So I'm gonna set this down when the top one looks about right, somewhere around there. Then I'm gonna select the bottom one, hit G twice and slide that up until it about matches. Then I'm gonna select the top edge loop, hit Control Shift R and here, do the exact same thing. And if you wanna move this a little bit slower in smaller increments, you can also hold down shift while you move your mouse and it'll make it a lot easier to control. So just like that, looks pretty cool. So now I'm gonna select both middle edge loops by holding alt to select the first one, then shift alt to select the next one. And here I'm gonna hit S shift Z to scale them in on the Z, on all axes except for the Z axis. And you notice we get that nice indentation now. I'm gonna scale mine in about that much, something like that. If I hit tab to go to object mode, it's looking pretty cool, but you'll notice we get this weird dome curve shape. It's It sort of like curves all the way in from down here. And we don't want that. We want this to be nice and straight up until the indentation. So to fix that, I'm gonna hit tab to go back to edit mode. And we're just gonna add a few extra divisions. One right here, click and drag it up. One right here, click and drag it down. That'll straighten out the strip. Then I'm gonna click control R and add one right here like so, looking pretty cool. And add one right here above our little strip indentation thing. So now if we hit tab, do back to object mode, this is looking pretty cool. I might wanna make it a little bit shorter. So just like we've all already done plenty of times, I can just go to wireframe. I can select these loops by clicking and dragging. Then I can hit GZ and move it up just a little bit. Maybe even do it in solid mode. And something like that I think looks pretty cool. So the last ornament on this cup is gonna be this little extrusion down here. So to do that, I'm gonna go down to the root of our cup and the top of our stem. I'm gonna go to wireframe mode and here we already have these divisions set up correctly. If not, you can just cut an extra loop if you need it. So I'm going to hold alt to select this edge loop, hit GG, <laughs> good game, to slide it down until I think it's about the right thickness. Maybe somewhere around there for a nice base ring. We can always change this later. Then I'm gonna go to face select by hitting three on my keyboard, hold alt, select this loop of faces, hit E to extrude, and now this group of faces is extruding up and down, not quite exactly what we want. So I'm gonna right click, that's still going to do the extrusion, the extra geometry exists, it created it, you can see it with the dots for these individual faces like that, but it didn't actually move the faces out at all. So now that we have the extruded faces selected, we can hit S, Shift Z to scale on everything except the Z axis, and we can just scale this out as far as we want our ring scaled out. I don't wanna go too far here, maybe something like that. You'll notice in solid shaded mode that this just looks kind of lumpy now. It's kind of ugly and we don't really want that. That's not the look we're going for. So we just need to add some additional edge loops here to sharpen it out. But first, I'm gonna do some sliding. I'm gonna go to vertex select. I'm gonna select the outset edge and I'm gonna hit GG to slide it down a little bit to make this a nice diagonal. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the bottom to make that a little bit of a nice diagonal. And here, we're just gonna add the extra edge loops we need by control R clicking to make some nice corners. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the stem here. Exact same thing on the stem here and then out to the corner like that. And all this stuff again is the exact same stuff we've been doing throughout this entire tutorial video. So I think you've got a good handle on it personally. And just like that, we have our nice ring. So at this point, I think we have a pretty cool looking trophy cup. We might want to adjust the height of it. We might want to adjust the stem and stuff, which we can do. Uh, again, because I'm a perfectionist, normally I just leave it be. 
I'm going to select all of these points just like we've already done and just move this up a little bit to make the stem a little bit taller. And at this point, our trophy cup is pretty much done. I think it's looking pretty cool. Um, although you will notice that it looks kind of like a disco ball. And that is because we can see each of the individual faces. And one way to fix that would be to subdivide this indefinitely until we just have so many faces that each one takes up less than a pixel, but that would probably set your computer on fire. So instead, Blender has a few different shading modes. If we go to the object menu in the upper left hand corner here and go down here where it says shade smooth or shade flat, the default is flat shading where you have a nice sharp edge between each of the faces. The next option is shade smooth. So if you click that, that will like blur between the lines of all the polygons and make your sharp faces look like a nice smooth round object, which is exactly what you want. So the final step here is going to be to create this nice trophy base. So to do that in object mode, I'm going to have my trophy selected, hit GZ to move it on the Z axis, and I'm gonna move it up as far as I think it needs to go. Maybe somewhere around maybe somewhere around here. I'm a perfectionist. Then I'm going to hit three to go to orthographic right view. I'm going to hit shift a go to mesh and I'm going to add a cube. At this point, this is the exact same practices we've been doing already. I'm just going to hit tab to go to edit mode, hold Z, go to wireframe, and I'm going to select the bottom vertices. I'm going to go to my transform panel, click the Z, set that to zero to set them on the floor. I realize I'm speeding through this a little bit, but again, this is exactly what we did at the start of our trophy cup. So here I'm going to select the top vertices. I'm going to hit G Z. I'm going to move those down until they about match the trophy cup. If they're a little bit lower, it doesn't really matter because that'll honestly create more convincing um, contact shadows in the long run. So I'm going to set that down somewhere around there. Then I'm going to select the back ones, hit G Y. I'm going to move those in until it's a little bit closer to our trophy cup. Then I'm going to select, click and drag to select this entire corner edge. You'll notice it selects the entire edge from the side since we're in transparent wireframe mode. And here we're going to learn our next modeling tool of the day. This is the bevel tool. So if I hit control B on my keyboard, that will bevel your corners or edges. Uh, which is really neat. And the bevel tool actually has a whole lot of functionality. For instance, if I scroll up on my mouse wheel, now I can add a whole bunch more subdivisions to make a nice round bevel. Or I could hit P on my keyboard now, and that'll allow me to change the profile of the bevel, which is really cool. And even after, even if I set it down, now we also have this little pop-up right here that allows you to change all of that until you do your next thing in Blender. So if I can change the width of the bevel, I can change the amount of segments on it, and I can change the shape of it. Now, I just want the one segment, and I'm gonna change the width up to something like that. At this point, I'm gonna close our little bevel window, and now I'm going to select these vertices. You'll notice the bevel window disappears. Now it's too late to make any changes. That is solidified. And here I'm just going to hit G, Y, and move this forward on the Y axis until it about matches the back. So at this point, that base is looking pretty cool. Go to solid shaded mode to get a better look at it. And here I'm just going to hit A to select everything. And I'm going to hit SX to scale on the S -axis, X axis and maybe just scale this down a little bit until it looks about right to me. I think that's looking pretty cool. So the next step is going to be to add our nice little nameplate. And to do that, we're going to learn a new modifier. So first, I'm going to hit three to go to face select. I'm going to select our diagonal face and I'm going to hit I to inset it about as much as I think is necessary for a nameplate. Maybe something about that looks a little bit okay. I can also bring up this little pop-up and I can adjust that until it looks more correct. Put the pop-up away. And here I'm gonna hit Shift D, which is duplicate in Blender, and that'll duplicate our face. I don't wanna move this at all, so I'm just gonna right click to set it back in place, but the duplicate did still happen. Notice if I hit G to move it, it does actually exist. So at this point, I'm gonna hit P to bring up the separate menu. I'm gonna hit selection, and that will separate our selected face into its own individual object container. So to select it again, I'm gonna to need to go back to object mode. So I'm gonna hit tab on my keyboard, 
select my little nameplate, and here we're gonna use something called the solidify modifier, which allows you to take a flat surface and give it some thickness without destructively modifying your geometry. So I'm gonna go to the modifiers panel, click the drop down, and here we're gonna select the solidify modifier right above the subdivision surface modifier. So if I click on that, You'll notice it's now extruding into our trophy base, not quite what we want. So rather than intruding to extrude this, I'm gonna change the offset from negative one to one by just clicking and dragging on the slider. Now it has a little bit of thickness, but I want it to be a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna click on the thickness and drag, but you'll notice that moves in pretty big increments. So while I'm dragging, if I hold shift, it's going to move in much smaller increments and it's going to be a whole lot easier to control. So I think something like 0 0.025 meters is pretty good for our nameplate thickness. And one final step for the day before we move on is this base has perfectly sharp edges. In real life, perfectly sharp edges on objects do not exist. Everything is worn down or beveled at least a little bit and catches the light at least a little bit. Especially as you can see in the reference here, that little extra bit of light catching just makes it look a little bit more believable. So to add that, we're going to bevel this base, but we're not gonna do it in the geometry. We're gonna add a bevel modifier. So I'm gonna select the base, go to our modifiers panel, and here I'm going to add a nice bevel. And that's gonna bevel it a whole lot. So I'm just gonna click on the amount, hold shift and drag it to the left until it bevels it just a tiny little bit. You don't need a whole lot here. A little bit of beveling goes a really long way in terms of catching the light in interesting ways. And at this point, I think I'm pretty happy with where we are on our trophy cup. We've got our nice trophy base. We've got a pretty dope, sick, nasty, ill looking trophy cup if I do say so myself. So. In the next video, we're gonna add these really cool curved handles using Bezier Curves, which is an entirely different method for modeling in Blender. But until the next video, mess around, make your trophy cup uniquely yours. And until then, I'll see you in the next video. At this point, you should have your very own trophy cup modeled. And again, I wanna encourage you to explore here, mess around, have fun, and come up with something truly unique to you. If you found this video useful and want to stay tuned for day three, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell. I'll be releasing these basics videos on a daily basis for the duration of the course. And if you want to come hang out with me live, I'm live at least every Friday over at youtube.com slash oraclefish. Also, if you want to download my example files or just support what I do here on the channel, make sure you check out my brand new Patreon. Link in the description. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia. I'm your stream scholar and class is out. Oh,